Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina wa syafi'ina wa habibina wa qa'idina wa qurrati uyunina sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today insha'Allah we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam one of the mothers of the believers and the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم السيدة ميمونة بنت الحارث رضي الله عنها Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 50, وَمْرَأَةً مُؤْمِنَةً إِنْ وَهَبَتْ نَفْسَهَا لِلنَّبِيِّ إِنْ أَرَادَ النَّبِيُّ أَنْ يَسْتَنْكِحَهَا Amongst the lawful women that Allah counted uh, uh, in this surah, in Surah Al-Ahzab, and a believing woman, if she gives herself to the Prophet, if he wishes to marry her. So this is the key point about Ummul uh, Mu'mineen, Maymuna bint al-Harith. Athena Aisha radiyallahu anha says, she talked about Sayyidah Maymuna saying, she was amongst the most pious of us. كانت والله أتقانا وأوصلنا للرحم And she was the most who connects her kinship. So she swore about that. So who is Maymuna رضي الله عنها? Maymuna رضي الله عنها هي أم المؤمنين the mother of a believer, she was a fearful lady of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She, wa, she was a wise lady. She was a noble lady. She was so content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever he uh, decrees on her. Her name was Barra bintul Harith. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave her the name Maymuna, which, which means auspicious, happy, joyful, favorable, because he married her uh, in a happy, during a happy event, during a blessed event. And that was the event of Mecca to perform Umrah. And that was the first time after seven years when Quraysh, uh, when they migrated from Mecca because of the uh, bad torture they received from Quraysh. Her mom is Hind bin Tu'awf. Hind bin Tu'awf ibn Zuhair ibn al-Harith. And it is said that she was the mother-in-law with the best sons-in-law on earth. Akramu ajuzin fil ardi ashara. How is that? Who are her in-laws? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu an. Sayyidina Hamza. Sayyidina al-Abbas who are uh, Hamza and Al-Abbas are the sons of Abdul Muttalib, the uncles of, two, of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also of her in-laws are Ja'far wa Ali, the sons of uh, Abi Talib, the cousins, uh, so they are the cousins of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there were other uh, uh, honorable uh, uh, people, honorable uh, uh, men of Quraysh. So this, one, this is Umu Maymuna, the mother-in-law with the best sons-in-law on earth. Uh, Maymuna's uh, sister is called Umu Fadl, 
Bintu al-Harif, and she was the wife of Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. So she was the wife of the uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she was the mother of his children. And she was, Umm al-Fadl was the first woman after Khadija radiyallahu anha to announce the shahada. And that was of the woman, of course. So what is uh, recognized about Umm al-Fadl? Uh, Islam records something very important for Umm al-Fadl, that she hit Abu Lahab, you know, the enemy of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his uncle. And that was uh, when, when the people in Mecca learned about the defeat of Quraysh in the Battle of Badr, Abu Lahab got so angry and he, uh, he said so many bad words and he was, he was so angry because of that. So when uh, Umm al-Fadl, when her uh, servant saw how, uh, what happened to Abu Lahab, he, he got so happy. At that time, Abu Lahab hit him severely that it was about to kill him. When Umm al-Fadl saw that, she took one of the big sticks that was close to her and she uh, lifted up with both hands and she uh, hit Abu, uh, Abu Lahab with all the power she got. So, she, uh, uh, she opened his uh, uh, skull and he was bleeding severely. And when he went to his home, he was so humiliated. He was so uh, uh, noisy. He barely, he, he, he would be able to walk. And because of that hit, strong hit, it was only seven days until he got a very contagion uh, sickness. It was called al adasa And it was just a few days uh, later that he died. But because of that contagion uh, uh, sickness that he got, everybody got away from him, even his wife and his son. So this was the first sister of Umm al-Fadl, uh, of Maymuna radiallahu anha, uh, the wife of Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. The second sister was Zainab bint Khuzayma, and she was the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the mother, uh, uh, the mother of the poor, the mother of the needy, and that was her nickname. Of course, she, uh, she uh, just married Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, for a few months and she passed away. The third of her uh, sisters was Asma ibn Umais, and she was the wife of Jafar ibn Abi Talib. And after Jafar passed away, she married Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And after him, she married Sayyidina Ali. The fourth of her sisters was Selma bin Umais, and Selma was the wife of Hamza radiallahu an, the uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So now let's talk a little bit about uh, Sayyidina Maymuna. Uh, before uh, 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 Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was married from Abi Ruhami ibn Abdul Uzza al-Amiri. And he passed away and she was still very young. So she was uh, a widow living next to her um, uh, sister, Umm al-Fadl, the, the wife of Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttal. She was 26 when she uh, was widowed. And uh, she uh, uh, decided to live her life away from the uh, uh, 
um, from uh, the happiness, from the uh, attractions of this life. She she was uh, so uh, uh, wanted by so asked for by suitors, but she she did not want to get married. Days passed, time passed, years passed. Six months, uh, six years passed until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam left uh, uh, Mecca and lived in uh, Medina for so many years. And we know that so many battles happened and uh, uh, there were so many victories for uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the last one was the, uh, uh, the conquering of Khaybar. And after Khaybar, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to go to Mecca and uh, to do Umrah. So he went with his army, with his people, with the Muslims, but Quraysh did not allow him. And they signed a contract with him, uh, uh, and it was called Sulh al And uh, so the Treaty of Hudaybiya. And in that a treaty, they, uh, uh, it was supposed that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, would go back this year with his uh, companions and they will not perform any Umrah. The next year they could perform the Umrah. So time flies. One year later, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, ordered his companions just to get ready because they are going to Mecca to perform Umrah. And they got there. Every one of the non-believers, they ran away to their homes. So Mecca was empty for them. And the Muslims were so happy. They were all crying in one voice. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. La ilaha illa Allah wahdah. صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده. This is what we say, what we do uh, before prayers of Eid and after the prayers. So the, the Muslims were very happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fulfilled the promise uh, when, he, when he promised them in uh, Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 27, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ So, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has certainly showed to his messenger the vision in truth. لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ so that was the, the, uh, a dream that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they are entering Mecca. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed his messenger that the vision is truth. So you will surely enter Al-Masjid Al-Haram if Allah wills in safety. مُحَلِّقِينَ رُؤُوسَكُمْ وَمُقَصِّرِينَ With your heads shaved, uh, so uh, uh, either shaved completely or partially لا تخافون not fearing anyone فعلم ما لم تعلموا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what you did not know فجعل فجعل من دون ذلك فتحا قريبا and Allah has arranged before that a conquest near. So everyone was happy to be in Mecca and everyone, they rushed to the Kaaba and they did the tawaf. 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that, pray two rakahs at the uh, maqam of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then the Muslims went out to Safa and Marwa to, to, to perform the sa'i. So that, was, that day was not a normal day. Mecca was shining with the lights of uh, uh, fairness, with the lights of justice. So the, the, those of the non-believers, the few people whom uh, they, they did not run away, they were looking at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the uh, companions while they were doing the tawaf very happily. So also the ladies were looking at the uh, uh, group of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions also, and they were so happy with what was happening. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was promised to come back and here, there he is with his companions. So everyone in Mecca was so happy looking at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, these are the, the Muslims that they were there. So within this group of people who, was, who, who all felt so happy, there was an honorable woman, one of the uh, ladies of Quraysh. She was looking at everything that's happening, not only with her eyes, but also with her inside eyes. She was bright. She was looking and her mind was understanding what's happening and why it's happening. What's the reason because it's happening? She, her insight was bright because she was seeing the, the divine light that was pushing and that was moving all those Muslims. And those Muslims who were supporting, who supported their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And everyone was so happy. She was one of them that she, uh, uh, she was happy because of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what he said in, in the Quran about in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 129, when he talked about the call of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asked Allah, when he made the prayer, Rabbana wabath fihim rasoolam minhum, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, and send among them a messenger from themselves. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ This messenger will recite to them your verses and teach them the book and wisdom and purify them. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, you are the exalted in might. You are the wise. So this honorable lady was watching what was happening. She was at one of the windows of the house of Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, the husband of her sister. She was next to her sister. She was watching Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions very happily. So Umm al-Fadl, at that time, she got the idea of having the honor of marrying Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of being a mother to the believers. She thought about this idea again and again, and she found it okay. There is nothing that would prevent her from 
fulfilling this dream. So she was, she was next to her sister when she told him, when she told her that, look, um, Fadl, this is what I have in mind. In no second, Umm al-Fadl went to her husband, Al-Abbas, and she, she told him about her sister's wish. So Sayyidina Al-Abbas went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, he, told, he told him, so he told his nephew that Barra has given herself to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to him and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala immediately revealed the ayah that وَمْرَأَةً مُؤْمِنَةً إِنْ وَهَبَتْ نَفْسَهَا لِلنَّبِيِّ إِنْ أَرَادَ النَّبِيُّ إِنْ فِسْتَيْكِحَهَا So uh, um, a, believing, a believing woman if, if she gives herself to the Prophet if he wishes to marry her So Al-Abbas came back and his uh, uh, his face, his the face features showed happiness, and um, uh, Barra radiyallahu anha saw that uh, happiness on Al Abbas's face, but she was waiting eagerly just to hear his his uh, voice, his his reply, his answer, and he told her that. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted her offer. So with this, her mom became akrama juzin fil ardi ashara. The, the, the best woman uh, uh, in, on earth to have the, the best mother-in-law in with the best sons in law on earth. So the three days passed of Sulh al Hudaybiyah. This was the um, how long uh, they were uh, to to stay in Mecca. This is what they agreed upon. So these three days passed uh, very quickly, and uh, the two two of uh, two messengers of Quraysh came to him to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking him to leave with his companions. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what about if you leave me and I will have my wedding here and we will uh, um, uh, cook food and you will, you will share the food? Of course, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to, take, to, to gain more time in Mecca. And his aim was... Uh, also, not only for, for his companions and himself, but also that the non-believers will have, will see them more and that will uh, touch their hearts. So they would know that they were stubborn, they were uh, envious, they were, uh, hate, uh, they hated uh, Islam, but they would know that there is nothing but Islam. So they refused and they said, we, know, we don't need your food, so just leave. Of course, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fulfilled his promise and, uh, and uh, the uh, um, uh, one who was in charge just called the Muslims and asked them, we are leaving. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left with his companions and uh, 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 he... Uh, and they went on their way to Al Madinah Al Munawwar. So uh, when they got, uh, when they left about a few miles away from Mecca, it was uh, a place called Saif. So um, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, got married to Barra radiallahu anha and he called her, he changed her name from Barra to Maymuna. So uh, Sayyida Maymuna radiallahu anha 
entered the house of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as one of the mothers of the believers. And she lived with uh, uh, the, the other mothers of the believers. She lived in her home. She was so happy that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given her the honor to be of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, there was uh, not a single history uh, event that there was a problem between her and the other uh, mother mothers of the believers. She was just a worshiper of Allah, thanking him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has given her the honor of uh, marrying the best of the creatures, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, on his deathbed, uh, he was at the house of Sayyidina Maymuna radiyallahu anha. So he asked her and he asked all his wives that he is to be moved to the house of Aisha radiyallahu anha. And uh, of course, all of them agreed to that. And... Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, when he passed away, Maymuna radiyallahu anha lived years after him. She lived uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was uh, very uh, uh, honest. She was very uh, kind and uh, she uh, she was the uh, uh, one of the uh, mothers of the believers who narrated so many hadith for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she asked that before uh, when she gets married, she wanted to be uh, buried in the same place where she. Uh, got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and that was the uh, place called Serif as I just mentioned and she passed away radiallahu anha in the year 51 Hijri and she was uh, 8 years old her uh, nephew Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas uh, 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 led the uh, uh, Janaza prayer and he uh, uh, he uh, fulfilled her uh, wish and she was buried in Serif so this was the last of the mothers of the believers who got married to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who passed away and buried in the same place where she got married to him. So now with the time left, let me have just a, a summary of the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And... Uh, we start, of course, with Khadija bin Tuhwaylid, radiyallahu anha, who believed Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when people belied him. She supported Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with, when people opposed him. She supported him emotionally and she supported him with her wealth. She was the first of people to say the shahada. She was the mother of the children of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima, Zainab, Ruqiya, Umm Kulthum, Wal Qasim, radiyallahu anhum jamiyan. She was given the glad tiding of Al-Jannah and she got the honor of the uh, of receiving a salam from Allah, a greeting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She passed away when she was 65 years old. Her death caused so much soreness to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, 
She lived with him 25 years. He never got married again with her. And he married three years after her. And she was buried in al Hajri. The second wife was Sauda bin Tuzama. And she married uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam three years after the passing of Sayyidina Khadija Radiallahu Anha. She was taking care of his family and uh, she died at the uh, uh, time of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. The third of his wives was Aisha Radiallahu Anha, Aisha bin to Abi Bakr. She was so loved to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, she was 18 years old. She was the, uh, uh, a very important person to go back to if there is a matter that was problematic to the Sahaba, how would they solve it? How would they, what would uh, happen? Uh, how they can uh, deal with it. So they would go to Aisha radiallahu anha and they would get her advice. Uh, she died in uh, Ramadan, 17th of Ramadan, in the year 85 Hijri, and she was 67 years old. Then the fourth wife was Hafsa bin Tu'amar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anha. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to her and uh, uh, after her husband passed away in uh, the battle of Uhud, uh, he, he passed after some time because of his wounds in the battle and she was known for her uh, knowledge, for her eloquency, and she, she narrated 60 of uh, the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was a person who was so wise and uh, uh, the Sahaba would go back to her for advice also. She passed when she was 60 years old in the year 45 Hijra. Then we have Zainab bin Tuhuzayma radiallahu anha. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married her, but it was the shortest marriage for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was only a few months, and uh, she lived with Sayyidina, that she lived with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a few months only, and she died when she was 30 years, years old. She was known and she was given the title of Ummul Masakin because of her uh, uh, kindness to the uh, poor, the needy, the widows, and the orphans. She witnessed, uh, uh, she participated in Ghazwat Badr, and she was given, uh, giving the uh, care and attention to uh, the why uh, to the wounded uh, uh, of the uh, army, the wounded uh, men of the army of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then we have Ummu Salama, Hind bin to Abi Umayyah bin al Mughira, and the unique thing about Ummu Salama when her husband uh, passed away, she asked Allah subhanahu wa taala, Allahumma Ya Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufni khayran minha. Ya Allah, give me, give me the reward of my musibah, of my being patient uh, for this uh, calamity and replace me a better one. Replace me a better uh, husband. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored her with marrying Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was known uh, with her Lots of knowledge. She narrated so much on, for of the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She passed away when she was ninety years old, at the year fifty nine of Hijrah, and she was the last. Uh, uh, she was, uh, as I mentioned, ninety years old when she passed away. Then we have Zainab bin Tujahsh 
and she was the cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her mom was Umayma bintu Abdul Muttalib, the aunt of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was married to Zayd ibn Haritha, who was known bef- uh, at one time to be Zayd ibn Muhammad. So when Zayd uh, divorced her, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to marry her. And she was uh, uh, always uh, 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 so proud of that. And she would say to the other wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your family got you married to Sayyidina Muhammad, but I was married by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over seven heavens. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave her the glad tidings that she would be the first of his wives to follow him, to, to pass away. Then we had Juwayriya bint al-Harith, and she was of the people uh, of the tribe of Bani al-Mustaliq. Her father was the uh, leader and Sayyidina, uh, who, who, he wanted to, to fight Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so he did. So see, uh, it was a very, very uh, big victory to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were defeated, uh, her, the Bani Mustalaq were defeated, and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, there were 700 people of her tribe that were captured. Uh, so uh, she asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to help her paying her uh, the money uh, to, re- to relieve herself from being a slave. Uh, but Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, isn't there anything better than this? And she said, what is that? And he said, I will marry you and I will pay all your, uh, uh, all the money that, uh, that you, uh, you, you have to pay. So she accepted. and. Uh, the the seven hundred people of her tribe were re- re- released. She was a a, a, um, a very uh, a very good worshiper of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Where she would uh, be fasting a lot and uh, doing lots of qiyam al layl, and uh, she was good to the to the poor also. Uh, she pa- she passed away in the year 50 Hijri. Then we have Safiya bin Tuhiya ibn Akhtab. Uh, and uh, her father was one of the leaders of uh, the Jewish and uh, uh, he was known a very, a very uh, knowledgeable person in his uh, uh, tribe. So on the day of Khaybar, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam killed her father and her husband. And uh, at the end of uh, the, the, uh, uh, that, that, that day and uh, when everything uh, settled, so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, proposed to her that you either uh, uh, marry me, you either become a Muslim and, mar- and I will marry you, or you go back you stay on your religion, you go back and you follow your people. She, she didn't want to go back, of course. No one is there for her. Her father died, died, her husband died. So she decided to become a Muslim and to marry uh, Sayyid, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her when, uh, when the other mothers of the believers, uh, uh, when one of them t- said to her, you are uh, a daughter of uh, a Jewish uh, person, she said, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam t- uh, told her, tell her, I am the daughter of uh, a prophet, the uh, 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 um, mother, the um, uh, my uncle is a prophet and my husband is a prophet. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam was so kind to her because she was, uh, uh, she had no, no family, no, 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 no one uh, uh, around her. And uh, no, none of her people were around her. And she died in the year 52 of Hijrah. Then we talked about Umm Habiba. Ramla bintu Abi Sufyan, 
and she was the closest to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in lineage. She was his uh, cousin. And uh, when uh, Sayyidina, uh, Say, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to marry her, he sent to a Najashi to, uh, to uh, for that because she was in Al Abyssinia when uh, and uh, her husband. Uh, 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 did not want to be to complete as a Muslim, so he apostatized. And uh, uh, her uh, and Najashi got her married. He he was the or the one who got the contract for her uh, uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She was the most of his wives with uh, a dowry. It was four hundred dinar. And uh, she passed away in the year 44 of Hijra. Then we have Maymuna bint al Harith. And we, uh, uh, we just uh, talked about her that she was the sister of Umm al Fadl, Zawja al Abbas, the wife of al Abbas, the uncle of Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, about her, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha said, so she was the most pious of us and the most of us who would connect her, uh, the, uh, the uh, kinship. She passed away when she was 81 years old and um, uh, that was in the year 51 Hijra. And she was buried in Saif next to Mecca very close to Mecca, a few miles away from Mecca. And that was the place where she got married to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those were the 11 wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Two of them passed away when he was, uh, when uh, uh, he was alive. And those were, uh, uh, of course, uh, Sayyida uh, Khadija radiallahu anha and as Sayyida Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha. Now, we might ask someone, might say, okay, what about Maria al Qubtiya? Maria al Qubtiya was the mother of Ibrahim, the son of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So someone might say, okay, why she wasn't one of, why she wasn't called one of the believers of, say, uh, uh, one of the mothers of the believers of, uh, of the Muslims. So Mary al Qibtiya was a slave woman who was um, uh, gifted to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by, by al muqawqas the king of uh, Egypt. And uh, that happened, the story happened to place when we will talk about that briefly. <clears throat> Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <clears throat> sent a letter to the king of uh, uh, Masr, so the, to al muqawqis uh, with Hatib ibn Abi Balta. And with the letter, uh, the letter said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila al muqawqis azim al qibd. So from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, to al muqawqis, the uh, king of the uh, uh, Christians, the uh, big of the greatest leader of the Christians. Salamun ala man ittaba al huda. Peace upon those who follow the right uh, path. Amma ba'd fa inni ad'uka bi da'wati al Islam. I am calling you to Islam. Aslim taslam yu'tik Allahu ajraka maratain. Be a Muslim, you will be safe, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you double. So al muqawqis took the uh, letter of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He honored the letter. He put it in uh, uh, a special place. And uh, he uh, uh, was good to Hatim ibn Abi Balta, and he sent another. He sent a letter himself to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said to him, "Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, li Muhammad ibn Abdullah, to 
محمد ابن عبد الله من المقوقس عظيم القبط from uh, المقوقس سلام عليك peace be upon you أما بعد فقد قرأت كتابك وفهمت ما ذكرت فيه وما تدعو إليه I read your letter, your letter and I understood what is in, in it and I understood what you are calling for وقد علمت أن نبيا بقي I know that there is a last of the prophets وكنت أظن أنه يخرج بالشام and I thought that he would be uh, revealed to in, in uh, Sham in the uh, in this area وقد um, أكرمت رسولك and I'm, I was good to, to your uh, messenger uh, بلتع of كوحاظ حاطب uh, وبعثت لك بجاريتين لهما مكان في القبط عظيم so I sent with him two slave women and they they have a very high rank with us. And their names was Maria bin Tushamun and Uhtuha Sirin, her sister, bin Tushamun. So I sent you these uh, two slaves and I sent you uh, uh, clothes. وبكسوة وهديت إليك بغلة لتركبها and I also sent you a, a donkey to so uh, you would ride it والسلام عليك and peace be upon you so these two slaves were uh, crying all the way when they were traveling they were traveling from Egypt to Medina they were scared they didn't know what's going to happen to them so Hatib told them the story of Hajar radiallahu anha, the wife of uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, and how she uh, traveled almost all the way until, uh, uh, yani the same way almost until she arrived in Mecca. So he was telling them, uh, her story, how she traveled, and how she uh, was the wife of uh, a prophet, and how she got, uh, how she uh, uh, delivered a prophet also, her son Ismail. So when they were about to enter Medina, Maria and her sister Sirin, they, they became Muslim. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted the gift, Maria, and he gifted her uh, sister to Hassan ibn Thabit, who married her also. So knowing that she came from uh, Egypt, and Egypt has the Nile River, it's all greenery, and it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, so nice. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got her to live in a place called Al-Awali. And uh, it is said that Al-Awali is a place where uh, it opens to the farms of palm trees. So Maria was uh, of the Mulk al-Yameen. And uh, Mulk al-Yameen is the slaves, they're the, those whom the right hand possesses of a slave girl. So um, they were of the captives, uh, captured uh, slaves, or they were of those who were bought as slaves. So these are the, this is the type of woman whom uh, her, her master can, um, can have relationship with her without marrying her officially, but their, their, this relationship should be announced. So out of this relationship, Maria, uh, delivered Sayyidina Ibrahim radiallahu anhu. And at that time, all his, uh, the, the children, all the uh, uh, children of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Uh, so 
except for Fatima radiyallahu anha, so Zainab, Ruqiyya, Umm Kulthum, and their brother Al-Qasim, they were all died, uh, they all dead, they were all dead at that time, except for Fatima Zahra radiyallahu anha. And uh, it was uh, uh, known that when Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, was sick, his, uh, uh, it was, he was dying and uh, his uh, 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 Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to him and he, he uh, took him in his uh, lap and he said, in uh, the إن العين تدمع والقلب يحزن والقلب يحزن ولا نقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا ولا نقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا وإن بفراقك وإن بفراقك يا إبراهيم لمحزون uh, so uh, he uh, and this means that uh, when, of course, this was the uh, uh, the 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 words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the eye weeps and the heart grieves, but we say only what our Lord is pleased with, which is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. And we are grieved for you, Ibrahim. Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu anha saw how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so saddened with the death of her brother, uh, Ibrahim. And uh, she was very sad for that. So this was... Uh, a list uh, of the uh, wives of Mary, about the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to unite us all with the mothers of the believers, to unite us all with them under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with this session, we come to the end, to an end of this series, the perils of Islam, the mothers of the believers, the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And until we meet again in another series, inshallah, I leave you by sending your salam and my salam and uh, a special greeting to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته